Remember when we used to talk about the paperless office? E-commerce. Finding a contract on paper. And even giving out an agent's pager number. We're in a mobile world. We're in a mobile world and, and your, your business, business needs, needs to, to be too. too. It's a digital world. Workflow is changing. And so too are our experiences. There are over 350 prop tech players right now competing for the space. How do you keep up with it all? And what's next? Welcome to Founders. A new podcast with Josh Vegan On the future of workflow in real estate. Being a really good real estate agent is really understanding the customer experience that you're actually going to set forth on. And it's really important to understand what are the jobs you actually get done for consumers, both before, during, and post a transaction. And ultimately, if you do more of the jobs that really matter, then you can actually increase your value and therefore increase your fee. This is one of the greatest challenges is that agents don't really think about that customer experience. Once that sold stick is actually applied, we're kind of out of there. And to be honest, it's kind of like, see you next time rather than actually really thinking about what we can do to make it a pleasurable experience. And I always say, imagine if the commission was not payable until ultimately the buyer had lived in the property for a year. How good would you go with your after-sales service to actually set them up to be a future seller for you as a real estate agent? This is an incredible part of what it actually takes to be a great real estate agent, but it is also important to understand how you can actually drive up your fees by thinking about a blended fee with additional revenue that's available every single time that you do a transaction, whether or not you're in sales or property management. And also too, finding the awkward spaces in moments where consumers may have left you, but yet you can still be of service to make sure that you can drive additional revenue, but most importantly, to drive a better quality consumer experience. We've got Sean joining us from Connect Now. Sean, this is a great topic. I know that we're going to have a ton of fun with this. And ultimately, um, I know that literally people might not think that this is the sexiest topic that we've ever spoken about, but we're going to talk today about connections as opposed to connecting. And this is a really important conversation around what it actually takes because it's not just in property management, it is also in sales. Talk to us a little bit about Connect Now. What do you guys do and how do you actually help the modern real estate agent, but most importantly, the end consumer? Hey, Josh, thanks for having us along. That was a great opening, by the way. Um, I worked all night on that. <laughs> so Connect Now, we're a home moving connection services, hooking up the utilities for home movers that move from one property to the next. Mm. Now, as you said, it may not be regarded as the most sexiest, mm. but the value that it brings in both monetary, but brand and experience and customer experience overall is outstanding. So what I wanted to do today is perhaps challenge the audience to thinking about home connections, uh, the opportunity, how they can maximize that and think differently. It's interesting because you guys have been a pioneer in the space. And when you say pioneer, tell us a little bit, what what makes you a pioneer? Well, I guess when we first started just over 21 years ago, there was only a couple of us in the space. And now there's probably over 16 different home connections companies out there. Mm -hmm. And they're all vying for the attention and uh, of the home, of the real estate agents. Mm -hmm. um, we have been in the fortunate position of having a long-standing loyal crowd for a long time. Mm. But... Uh, it's still challenging to, mm -hmm. to get in front of new business and mm -hmm. really position ourselves differently from each other. And I think the big conversation is too is about like really actually understanding where you can add some, some, some substantial value. And you got to think that every single time that there's a facade board that goes up, a sold sticker applied, a lease board that goes up, a lead sticker applied, that every single one of those little transaction moments is another moment where ultimately someone's going to have to disconnect a set of services and reconnect a set of services to where they're moving to. And ultimately for the person who's going to be moving in, they're going to have to do it. So no matter what actually happens, there's a minimum of two connection services pretty much every single time that someone does a transaction. Absolutely. And somebody who has moved 14 times in the last 17 years, I can tell you, I've only used a connection service like ours in the last three. Wow. Yeah, like one in three people know a service like us actually exists. Mm -hmm. But those other times that I didn't use it, well, quick mass, what's that, 11? Mm -hmm. 11 other times. I spent four hours of mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. each time mm -hmm. connecting those services myself. Mm -hmm. That's two days of my life. I'm never getting back. And I hope I don't remember that at the end of my life. Herculean effort, right? That's right. So, so we kind of have a look at it. What, what are the things that, that, that are really important here? Obviously, there's um, essential services. You've got to get connected to a property. That's uh, going to be electricity, um, your gas. Uh, maybe, for example, Foxtel. Some people still get that. Telco. You know, that's, that's all the really important part. And Telco is mm -hmm. a massive part. And then also, in addition to that, there's some additional things that people can also get access to. Things like, you know, a removal list or maybe someone to come and do some of the cleaning um, of exit cleans on a property. Also, to some of the insurance stuff. Why is it important for people to actually understand that connections is now going beyond just the core basics and actually are that there are now some other ancillaries that are starting to come into this space? Yeah, one of the things we're proud of is that we have an Australian-based call center. Mm -hmm. And really, 
they're called CSRs, but mm-hmm. what they're in fact doing is they're taking the home mover on a handheld journey. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your lifestyle. Tell us about what you need. So the services that we offer is really in line to basically demand what mm-hmm. our customers have been telling us and asking us about for many years. Mm-hmm. And that's why we've been able to expand our service along with trusted partners and brands that people know and respect. It's kind of an interesting part. Like um, I bought a property and I was in that position. I got to settlement day and I'm moving in pretty excited. And I go there and I'm like, hey guys, yeah, pick up the key. And then they go, okay, cool. And by the way, um, here's a contact details for a great removalist. Mm. I'm like, no, no, it's a, it's a good idea. Too late. But poor timing on execution, right? Yeah. So everything in life is about actually understanding what are the trigger points for when the customer is going to need that next. And so really thinking about it to make it a really good quality and pleasurable customer experience. So, you know, that's kind of an interesting part around what it is that you do. Um, recently, I went to a hotel somewhere and I, and I can't remember it, but I, but I do know that what they did really well is they actually took the, co- the credit card details up front and I didn't have to give them any more credit card details when I got there. So there was none of that friction at the front counter turned up there we go straight in there's the room everything's done you're organized they got the dietary requirements up front and i didn't have to tell them about dietary requirements at all for the rest of the two-day stay and this is an interesting part around what actually is that customer experience is all about is about ironing out awkward customer moments and could you imagine it moving into your property and the gas didn't get connected or maybe you, you didn't have internet for like the first week and you had to try to get it off one bar of 4g like you start thinking differently that really um, success has got to look like people actually moving into the property and living there for a long period of time. Talk to us about the the, the ideal trigger point in both the, the lettings or the property management world and the sales world about where these types of services fall into play to actually make it an easy conversation. Yeah. Some of our most successful partners out there in the property management world, they're, well, they're positioning Connect Now right in the open home. So they have a flyers there and they're talking about their added service, what else they can do for the mm-hmm. home mover that's going to be successful in this property and what that experience looks like. So mm-hmm. bringing people along that journey. Mm-hmm. So it gets some um, people thinking about their real estate as an elevated service and rather than just a transactional, here's uh, here's the home, mm-hmm. check it out, hope mm-hmm. you like it, mm-hmm. put in an application. Um, but really the trigger for us is around the, uh, the lease agreement. Mm-hmm. So when they're filling that out, you'll see a lot of connection boxes there gaining consent. Would you like help with mm-hmm. your home moving connection service? Most recently, we've been also integrating with CRM services mm-hmm. that just automates all that for us. Mm-hmm. So depending on which way, mm-hmm. we work with all our partners in a variety of different ways mm-hmm. that best suit them. Uh, that will determine how it hits our call center, in which case we'll pick it up and we'll get on the phone with the home over, usually within an hour or two of receiving the request. So it's an interesting conversation because this is about saying, hey, look, what I'd do is I'd love to get everything organized from a connections point of view. Would you like me to do that for you? Once you've got that express permission, you're then going in and you're going to the agent portal. You're entering in like six pieces of, of data or info, information Max. about that particular client. And then literally, as soon as you press that submit button or that okay button, then all of a sudden an Australian call center is literally going to jump on the phone and, and get on and say, hey, Sean, it's Josh. Thought I'd give you a quick call. We've just got advice from Billy that you're in a position that you've just got a new property. Congratulations. That's super exciting. Um, I want to make sure I get everything organized for you. Um, did you need getting electricity? Excellent. In terms of gas, did you need anything there? Okay, good. Do you have an electric car, by the way? You know, so then the next conversation, um, in terms of Foxtel, are you happy with your existing? Okay, great. And, and in terms of telco, um, home phone, no. Internet, no. How many devices have you got? What does that look like? And okay, and when's your move-in date? And let me get all of that organized for you. And so that then ultimately, you don't have to hang on the phone for hours or go to like five different web forms and press submit. It ultimately just happens to remove the friction in the experience. Now, this is a really interesting path because when that actually happens, that triggers off a whole series of workflows. And one of those is about the constant communication, the nine touch points that actually happen. Talk us through what some of those touch points look like from when a consumer's um, detail has been given to you for then to go and, go and organize those connections. Yeah. So first of all, that was amazing. You can come to our call center anytime. <laughs> I know you've been busy for that, but no, that that's great. fine. I'm free on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, but one of the points you just mentioned there is, yeah, we get it. That today, a lot of people are tech savvy and they can probably do it themselves. Um, but the thing is, how can you sh- really assure yourself that it's been done, mm-hmm. that it's been organized? And mm-hmm. that's really one of our key points of difference. Having that human approach mm-hmm. is that we know serving our customers that 90% of the people want to talk to a human. They want that certainty that it's going to be getting it done. So we organize all of that and we do that in about 15 to 20 minutes. That's it. Now, you can go into a form or you can maybe you stay on hold with a call center and do it yourself, but you're not going to get the outcome of mm-hmm. 20 minutes at all connected. And that's mm-hmm. what we guarantee. In terms of the nine touch points, I, thanks for bringing this up because this is really about our home mover experience. So those sales agents that might have checked out 
talking too much about property management, come back in here. Because when you're thinking about home connections, a lot of people think it's just relevant to property management. Well, a couple of years ago, we expanded our operations to go into home sales. We know that there's vendors and buyers. They're going to be moving and mm-hmm. we can help them as well. And this is really a big part of our business that has changed significantly. And the outstanding results that we're achieving for them is being reflected for our NPS, mm-hmm. but also providing excellent value from the moment that we contact the home movers mm-hmm. and they exchange the contracts. Now that's a key trigger for us. Mm-hmm. So when they exchange the contracts, we're on the phone congratulating them on the purchase or the sale of their new house and we put them in a nurturing campaign mm-hmm. for the next nine touch points up until the settlement date. So think a little bit about that. Like I've just bought my property at auction on Saturday. We got the bottle of champagne. Everything's great. Sunday, I have remorse. Oh my goodness, I've got this big mortgage that's going to be coming my way. And now I've got to do all these other things to get ready, you know, financially. And Monday, the last thing I've got on my mind is actually getting everything organized for what's going to happen. And I haven't moved for a while and I've completely forgotten I've got to go and get all those services done. All of a sudden, bang, you get this phone call. Sean's on the other end of the line, wants to be a great friend of yours to say, hey, congratulations on buying your house off Josh. Um, What I'd love to do is just to get all of your connections and everything done so that when you move in, it's a great experience. Yeah. Would that be okay for you? And like, wow, like this is actually the difference about like really making sure that you're anticipating moves before they actually need to happen. So then consumers are like, you are one step ahead of the curve. That Josh guy that I bought from or that Sean guy that I bought from or that girl that I bought from Hannah was absolutely phenomenal around what it is that they're doing. And so this is interesting about being able to pass off the workflow at exactly the right point. Um, some people are looking at the whole conversations around CRMs and the importance of integrations and some of the stuff that goes on with consent. Tell us about like, you know, is that an important part of this space now that's starting to evolve or not? Yeah, absolutely. If we've seen what's happened overseas um, and we know that the laws in Australia is just going to get harder and harder around data privacy mm-hmm. and personal information. So we take that very seriously. We are proudly owned by AGL. Um, but we are ring fenced from their operation because we do provide suppliers that compete with AGL as well. But what that means is we take what we do very seriously. Maybe not always ourselves, mm-hmm. but what we do very seriously. We know that we have to protect the data of our home movers and that of our real estate partners. Mm-hmm. So for that, we only use the data that we need mm-hmm. focus on that transaction. We don't do anything else with it. We don't offshore it. We don't sell it off. So I guess that's just a level of certainty that you can have with partnering with us. One of the great conversations inside of any agencies to actually understand, okay, great, is there a financial model in this sort of stuff? Because we're talking about you know that blended fee beyond just the listing or the selling fee or the management fee and, and the letting fee. Are oh, there some additional fees that can be generated? And you know we've always kind of had this ideal that you know in, inside of every real estate transaction, there's a ton of things that are going to go on. And so ultimately, there, there could be some financial re- remuneration around that. Talk to us a little bit about how the rebates type of systems actually work in this particular area. Um, and particularly even when it comes down to the basics on an agency agreement, is there a rebate there or not? Is that disclosed or not? Because maybe it doesn't because it's the vendor as opposed to the buyer. So tell us how all that sort of stuff works. Yeah, we do have a a rebate schedule that we enter Mm -hmm. into an agreement with the real estate partners that partner with us. Um, And basically, it's a free service for the home movers. Mm -hmm. They only pay for the products and services in which they purchase and Mm -hmm. buy. Uh, Now, the companies that they buy from, Mm -hmm. they pay us a portion. So Mm -hmm. we're acting as basically a sales agent for them. And we pass on a percentage of that rebate back to our real estate partners. So therefore, they're being monetized. Mm -hmm. Depending on how many products we sell, and which I'm pleased to say, I I believe we sell more than most of our competitors out there. And we have a high conversion rate, which means that we're selling more often. That's great for consistent cash flow uh, for our offices as well. And what we find is they tend to split it out into one of three different ways. Mm -hmm. They'll either take the revenue fully back into their business Mm -hmm. and create a nice little cash flow for the business, or they'll give it to their property management team or their leasing consultants or sales associates Mm because they know that they're on the lower end of their Mm -hmm. earnings and just to keep them incentivized and motivated, Mm -hmm. or they'll do a blend of both, Mm -hmm. some for the business and some back to the team. And we find that the ones that do the blended gets the best results, higher conversion, higher engagement, and overall, everyone wins. Founders is brought to you by Josh Vegan Digital. You know, when we were setting out to go and create Josh Vegan Digital, we just had this whole idea that we wanted training to be on demand. You know, and everything in our life is on demand. We just press play inside of the Netflix app. We press play on YouTube, play on Spotify. Why couldn't we just press play on training? And what we decided is we want to be like super relevant to real estate agents so that in under a couple of minutes each day, if you wanted to, you could upskill and you could grow in new ways. And so we decided that we were going to release this thing that we called The Edit, which is basically the latest in property news stories that's happening every week right the way around the country. 
so you could be incredibly sharp in your conversations with sellers. And then we built out the short courses, which was all about rapidly building skills, you know, whether or not it's about learning how to get better fees or to put on an assistant. And then we actually wanted to give you access to Blueprint so you didn't have to wait for it every year. You could just watch it whenever you wanted and actually go from zero to hero around everything that it takes from goal setting, self and energy management, what you're doing around prospecting, listing, negotiation, and actually just have a system for the way that you work together with, you know, getting really inspired by some of the best people in the industry with the black and white interviews. Josh Vegan Digital is available on iOS and also on Android. It's an incredible app and it gives you everything that you'll need to be a much better agent. It's time to switch on. It's a really interesting conversation because what you're actually doing there is you're saying, hang on a second, it's actually about building out substantial value for consumers. And we're now in a position that ultimately there's a financial item in here to make sure it actually gets done. And to me, this is the billion dollar would you like fries with that question mm. inside of real estate practices? It might not be a billion, but you get the idea yeah. that Mac has apparently made a billion dollars over many years by just asking that simple question, would you like fries with that? I don't know. I've never said no to the fries. So you start thinking about what actually happens here in terms of the connection services. Like, I, I guess the problem is that for agents, they've just been busy. They've got a lot of stuff going on. They don't have it on a checklist. They did it once. They don't do it all the time. And it, ultimately that's where the problem is because it's not a consistent process. And this is what I say is that a process that's not documented can't be repeated with 100% efficiency and effectiveness. Yep. And, and if you get that right, then it changes what actually happens. And this is what you've got to start realizing. Like if people are aware of what you do, it changes everything. We went to a hotel in Tokyo um, for an event that we were doing. And when we got there, they opened the door and they said, oh, Mr. Fegan, lovely to see you. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'm just jumping in a normal taxi, nothing flash. I jump out and they literally then take my bag and we go straight through the entry foyer, straight into the lift and straight up into the, the level that I was staying on and straight into the room. And I was like, whoa, you know, because it was like 9 a.m. I was expecting, you know, no check-in until 3 p.m. type stuff. I'm like, oh, wow. And I'm like, okay, and there's your bottle of sparkling water. And I was like, wow. I said, how did you get all of this? And they said, well, what we did is at the point of actually booking the hotel, we were actually in a position that then we asked for your passport. And then we also then asked for the flight details of what flight you were turning up in. And you'd already used the credit card to secure the room. So as far as we're concerned, we know when you're turning up, you're going to arrive in Tokyo airport at this time. It's going to take 40 minutes to get through customs, about an hour to then literally catch a taxi from there because you refused the hotel car all the way back here. So we're looking for a slightly balding male to be turning up somewhere between this time and this time. And all of a sudden I've jumped out of the car and they've done photo recognition based off the passport detail that I'd given them prior now, that is actually a really well thought out experience of identify when are the points where the friction can be done so that it becomes frictionless in the moments that are actually supposed to be the really enjoyable moments. I'm, I was blown away, man. I, I was like checking into a hotel. And this is what you've got to start thinking about when being a great real estate agent, that if you want to get people in a position that they can start to refer you, they actually need to make sure it's a really good quality experience. Now, one of the things that you have quickly sidelined, but most people probably need a bit of understanding, what is NPS? We know it is Net Promoter Score. Um, I believe that that's a score out of 10. There's something that I'm meaning b below seven and eight, and then they're nine and a 10. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. So if you're not familiar with Net Promoter Score, the chances are you have probably done it or been mm -hmm. a part of it. If you went shopping or filled up petrol and you're asked to score your, your experience out of a 10, mm -hmm. um, that's a Net Promoter Score. It's globally recognized and most widely used. Mm -hmm. And basically, if you get a nine or a 10, mm -hmm. that's from a promoter. Mm -hmm. If you get a seven or eight, that's mm -hmm. considered passive. Mm -hmm. Now, six or under mm -hmm. is actually a detractor. Mm. I mean, six, man, <laughs> like five or six, I think, you know, whatever. But it actually, the algorithm greatly affects your net promoter score. And you can end up with minus 100 mm -hmm. or up to 100. Now, a lot of banks, financial institutions, lawyers, insurance companies, they tend to be about minus 40 to minus 60. <laughs> right. There's a bias there. But when you look at great companies like Netflix, uh, mm. Google, Amazon, mm. Uber, um, mm. uh, Volkswagen, mm -hmm. and um my my vacuum cleaner Dyson. Mm -hmm. they're, they're up around. <laughs> thought, thought you're going to go with Henry, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sixties to eighties, right? So yeah. our net promoter score is consistently above sixty. Mm -hmm. But when we look at home sales, mm. it's above eighty. Mm. And when we look at our business partners, so the people that work with us, mm -hmm. that's above eighty. Mm -hmm. So this is rainbow unicorn status. Mm -hmm. Like zero is good. Fifty mm -hmm. is great. Seventies mm -hmm. world class. Mm -hmm. But when you're hitting eighties. That's some. That's telling you that your customers love working mm. with you. Mm -hmm. Now, with the homeowners, I want to say this for the sales agents out there. A lot of our sales agents are starting to use us not for the monetary value. Mm. It's a couple hundred bucks for sale. Mm -hmm. I mean, it pales in comparison. The sales associates love mm -hmm. it, 
But what they're using it for is while we're asking people to score us that one to 10, we'll actually ask them, would you like to leave a comment based mm-hmm. on your experience? Mm-hmm. And what people are telling us, not about our service, mm-hmm. but the service they had at mm-hmm. the open home or mm-hmm. in the agency or who dropped off the keys or who forgot mm-hmm. um, or what the post settlement experience was like. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting that information. We're going back to our partners and we're telling them, Hey, these people had a great experience. Mm-hmm. These people did not. Mm-hmm. You might want to reach out to these ones and get on the front foot before they start talking around the barbecue with their friends and family. Mm-hmm. And the ones that did, well, mm-hmm. how good it would be to go to your future um, listing appointment with a pre-qualified testimonial mm-hmm. that you can reach out and say, Hey, you, you already know they scored you a 10. They referenced, referenced you and mm-hmm. what a great experience you had. Why not reach out to them? And say, if I have a future listing appointment, is it okay if I give them your name? Mm-hmm. That's done. Mm-hmm. So we have those insights that we can share with our partners as well. I think this is the big conversation for a lot of people is, is that, um, yeah, like there's, there's, uh, you know, we've heard a lot of people refer to that conversation that real estate agents are the least trusted. And, and I don't overly, Agree. I think that ultimately they're, they're probably the least trusted because um, there was actually someone who had more money who paid more than what you could pay, right? And yeah. so that's why you're upset. It's yeah. not necessarily that the agent didn't give you fair and equitable right to purchase it. You're just upset that the market's performing differently to where your expectations are. Um, and I think that like there's that, but then there's actually there's clearly agents who just have not thought through customer experience. Yeah. And I, and I'm like looking at okay, great. So what am I going to need to get done? And this is the most important part around what it is that you can do. Where you can start to iron out those inconsistencies and just get that stuff nailed. When you go and have a quick look at it, whilst it might not be sexy, if it's done really well, it's a high level of excellence. Yeah. That, and that, that's what I think a lot about, right? Yeah. A lot of our principals, they've un- come to understand the importance that we play in their business. Mm-hmm. Whilst it might be just a small part, but when it comes to customer experience, that's outstanding. People love it. Mm. You can see that in the comments and they don't see a separation from the real estate moving to home connections. Now, as a home mover, mm-hmm. it's one experience. It's just linear. So I'm, I'm associating everything I have based on how I felt at any given time. If someone connects with us and we get them moved in with the lights on and everything's working well, mm. that's a great move experience and they're feeling great mm. about their experience with the real estate agent. So from a customer experience side, great, mm. wonderful. From a staff engagement side, mm-hmm. the training that we're offering at office level with our uh, uh, sales support team Mm -hmm. nationwide, every state, Uh, we go into the office to make sure people are maximizing the opportunity. And then you have your business performance level. Mm -hmm. So not only in revenue cash flows, Mm -hmm. but also setting yourself separate from increasing your brand reputation through the MPS results that we're getting as well, both Mm -hmm. property management and home sales. And what what I'm thinking about too is some freak data sets. This is kind of what your what your conversation is kind of driven for me today. It's like, well, hang on a second. So the buyers just bought and the trigger point is the exchange of contracts. So what I'm going to do is uh, now I'm going to organize the connections. But now that that's actually just happened, where's my seller going? Hmm. And because wherever that seller is moving to, they're going to need a connection most likely. Let me get that organized for them. So it's actually now about the seller service. Then I then start thinking about, well, hang on a second. If I'm in a position that then I go and have a look on the rental side, the tenants has given a notice to vacate. Well, they're actually then going to move out of that and then they're going to move into a position that they're going to need a connection of where they're moving to. And then I've got the new tenant who's moving in. Well, actually, you know what? And so there's like, there's two transactions in every transaction where we should be actually making sure that we're helping with the connections. And if you think a little bit about that, this later on actually really substantially changes how you actually got to do the work. Because I'm saying to people, well, if you go to have a quick look at the connection side of stuff, if you get those points right, everything else changes. And I think that's a really important conversation around what it is that you do is that you've got to try to understand where are the points where they're moving from and where are they going? And so where the insights are for me is actually to understand, hang on a second, before, core and after. And this is where a lot of agents miss it. it literally, the core market might be a million dollars, but the person who buys the core market is coming from one from 500 grand. And you can actually pick up their resale there because they've got to sell the one for 500 to buy the one for a million. But the seller, when they sell at a million, is then going to go and buy one for one five the best way to actually get the forwarding address is to actually get it at the point around in the, the connections. And then you actually know the future markets that you're actually growing into to be a great real estate agent. And the, the point of those connections is the most important part because you understand the future of the marketplaces that you can go to work in. Sean, if you're a real estate agent and you need to find out some more information about Connect Now, where would you go to? You can check out our website, but also just click on the links with me. We have a lot of ways that we can help you understand how you can maximize home connections in your business, whether it's with us or not. The best way is to reach out to myself and I can put you in touch with your dedicated BDM for your local area. 
And what they can do is show you where you sit in comparison to your other local market competition, just so you can make an informed decision about, are you really maximizing the opportunity available to you? And what's the website address? connectnow.com.au. Sean, fantastic to have you join us on the Founders Podcast. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, Josh. All the best. All the best.